Hey everybody, Rich with Prep You down here in the bunker. Well, I said it was going to happen every Sunday. It all based on how much firearm legislation news is out there. Well, there's enough news this past week to have two Sundays in a row where we have our Sunday firearm legislation update. So let's go over. I'm just going to tell you everything that we're going to talk about, and then we'll go back and go over them a little bit more. The first thing, well, not necessarily in order. We're going to talk about some interesting information with the Illinois FOID and where it's going with the state legislature. We are going to talk about uh, the Oregon Court of Appeals uh, case against Sanctuary 2A counties in the state of Oregon. We're going to talk about a federal judge and his ruling regarding a TRO uh, on the Naperville gun ban uh, law. We're also going to talk about um, a federal judge and what they're requiring the state of Illinois and, as defendants and the plaintiffs uh, in the recent uh, case of the uh, firearms and magazine ban uh, and the TROs. We are also going to Go over uh, some statistics because let's base let's face it, legislation is based on good and bad statistics. But I've got several um, uh, news articles here that talk about statistics specifically in Chicago and the Chicago land area. But these statistics are no different than in New York, in you know different places in Arizona and New York and other places that are prone. Uh, to gun violence. So let's get into it. Let's talk about this. Let's go over some of these statistics that we've learned. Um, and Chicago is specifically a well-known place for violence for a very long time. Uh, the mayor, uh, Mayor Lori Lightfoot, uh, during the riots uh, back in 2020, uh, she was very quick to say, I'm taking $80 million away from the police budget and uh, we're going to put it elsewhere and help with counselors and other things and uh, hold the police more accountable. Well, it is now a election year and they're voting for the mayor, um, I believe, in a week and a half, two weeks in Chicago. And she's kind of changed her tune, but the damage is done. Uh, this one uh, article here talks about Chicagoans are shooting back and it's not going to stop until leaders lead. Um, Chicago had 67,000 67, reported major crimes last year, 41% higher than 2021, and already this year up 58% for the 11th year running. Chicago leads the nation in murders in 2022 with 697. Now, that is down over the last couple of years, but other major cities is down even more. Uh, and there were 400,000 times in 2021 where there were no police to respond to high priority crimes. Well, in this article, it goes on and on and on about how civilians like you and me who have gotten their concealed carry card after paying a lot of money to do it, go through a lot of courses, and then buying the firearm and the ammunition are carrying it wherever they go. They're even carrying it where they're not supposed to carry it. And unfortunately, that's where criminals know that you are not going to carry. So they get you there. Um, in this other article, they talk about uh, arrests in Chicago uh, plummet to historic lows as crime rises and police admittingly pull back. They're saying, no way. We are not giving chase because we can't. Uh, there's a law in Chicago that there's no foot pursuit. pursuit. Uh, many, Chicago, many Chicago police officers feel that uh, they don't want to um, put their lives on their line or end up on the news and being lambasted by the uh, anti-police friendly news media. Um, Fox Digital News uh, analyzed local media reports going back to 2020 and found that there had been at least 44 incidents which people with a gun who had concealed carry permits or a FOID um, have thwarted an attack or other crimes. There may have been other additional incidents 
that have not been reported by the media or to local police. Um, one of the articles they talk about here in one incident in 2021, a female concealed carry holder uh, celebrated having her gun on her when criminals approached her outside a bank after she had withdrawn a handful of cash. She said, thank God I had my gun or I'd probably be dead right now. That woman told CBS News that story. Um, what was left in the aftermath were police departments. They're talking about the, um, the uh, anti-police uh, wave here. Uh, what was left in the aftermath were police departments across the country facing an exodus of officers and contending with declining morale amid raging anti-cop sentiment. Very officers reported they had to work grueling hours to fill the voids left by the slew of officers who had retired. And we have seen that with uh, a lot of uh, police officer suicides, especially here in Chicago and, and other major cities. In Chicago, the mayor pledged in 2020 to cut $80 million from her city police budget. Over the summer last year, officers admitted to pulling back from carrying out the rule of law. They cited among their reasons growing hesitation or interacting with criminals with guns due to prosecutors having a tighter grip on approval, approving felony charges against criminals. With more scrutiny, some said they weighed whether making an arrest was worth their life or becoming a prominent news topic. Should you go figure? Yeah. Um, arrests were only made in 12% of crime cases in 2021 in Chicago, which is the lowest since 2001 sometimes found that year. The number of investigative stops also fell by more than 50% between 19 and 21, and fewer crimes were being reported to the police department by both residents and officers on the beat. Now, the rest of this article goes on. Uh, if you know John Lott, he's a, um, a well-known gun expert. He's done a lot of uh, um, focus groups and stuff like that have done a lot of statistics and he basically said in Illinois obtaining a concealed carry permit is difficult but still possible. He compared Illinois to its neighbor state of Indiana highlighting that a little over four percent of the adult population has concealed carry permits while in Indiana the number sits at about 22 percent. He says the difference comes down to money. It costs nothing to get a concealed carry permit in Indiana, while it is at least $400 in Illinois. Lott said that the heavy costs placed on Illinois citizens often prevent those who would most benefit from firearms for self-defense, most likely to be victims of crimes, from going through the required permit steps because they don't have the money. Uh, the sad thing in Illinois makes it so difficult for law-abiding citizens to be able to go and protect themselves, Slot says. They basically have to set it up so that the primarily the wealthy, well-to-do, were able to go and protect themselves. The problem is, is that people who are most likely crime victims of crime are poor. Blacks who live in high crime parts of Chicago and other places. And yet, you make them have to pay over $400 to get the permit. The state required training that they must have. And there we're not even talking about the cost of the gun or anything else. That's a real cost. So Rich, why are we going into these statistics? Well, these statistics are gonna play out really big in the last uh, subject that we're gonna talk about. And that goes back to the unconstitutionality of the Floyd card in the state of Illinois. But we're gonna to get to that. But let's look at a couple other articles here. Uh, this happened on Friday. And this last Friday, a federal judge denies TRO uh, restraining order, uh, temporary restraining order against Illinois assault weapons ban for Naperville gun store owner. Uh, so there's a gun store owner. Uh, for those of you that don't know, Naperville is a city outside Chicago, probably about 40 miles outside of Chicago, maybe 45. And the city council put forth an assault weapons uh, ban, excuse me. I, uh, <laughs> I know I hate calling it that, and I apologize to the people that say, stop calling it that. But that's what they called it in, in Naperville. So I'm just going to call it an assault weapons ban. Uh, it's a modern sporting rifle ban, basically, or a firearm ban, whatever you want to call it. Uh, and they put it in place, and several of the stores in Naperville were just family-run um, gun stores and ranges that uh, had to stop selling these firearms January 1st. 
A federal judge in Chicago denied a Naperville gun store owner and other plaintiffs a temporary ass assault weapons ban. The ruling issued by the Seventh Circuit Court rejected the lawsuit partially on Second Amendment grounds, writing, now this is the judge writing this, because assault weapons are particularly dangerous weapons and high capacity magazines are particularly dangerous weapons accessories, their regulation accords with history and tradition. You see how she brought that in? Accords with history and tradition, pulling what the Supreme Court said in the uh, New York case, but she kind of flipped it a little bit. Naperville and Illinois lawfully exercised their authority to control their possession, transfer, sale, and manufacture by enacting a ban on commercial sales. That decision comports with the Second Amendment. She must have a different Second Amendment uh, that I have because there's no way that that is in there whatsoever. Um, the gun store owner argued that the ban causes irreparable harm to his business. So that is the first case where a TRO has not been uh, issued. And this is uh, basically the uh, on the federal case. So we're going to have to see where that goes from here. All right. But in the other cases that the federal court has right now, federal judge in Illinois gun ban case order state to show each and every item banned. All right. So three federal lawsuits against Illinois gun ban made some movement Monday as a federal judge ordered a response from the state to show each and every item banned. So instead of listing everything, and if you've read this, I've read it, um, it lists all these firearms, it lists all these accessories and stuff like that, but it's just, it's like a grocery store list. It's, it's not specific, it's not showing anything particular. And the judge uh, in the Southern District of Illinois, the four cases are pending. One is from the Federal Firearms Licensee of Illinois. Uh, plaintiffs in that case filed a motion for a preliminary injunction last week. In three other cases, Federal Judge Stephen McGuinn Glenn ordered state defendants to provide illustrated examples of each and every item banned under the state law. There's 170 items banned. That's just firearms. Then it goes into grips and stocks and all this other, you know, all these other accessories that you can put on the firearms. Um, and Thomas Mag, who brought the state level case in Crawford County, um, that was transferred the federal court so the judge's orders will make it difficult for the state to comply very true because now they're going to have to go out they're going to have to get pictures they're going to have to show the judge each and every one that's on there and bag said because the ban is so all-encompassing and uses great many vague items that i'm not even sure that exactly what is banned and that's probably why judge mcglynn ordered the state to do so that we could find out exactly what we are arguing about they don't even know what they're arguing about, you know, uh, which is really crazy. He said the state has a tough road to hoe, especially given recent U.S. Supreme Court precedent. The case regarding the Second Amendment must review text and tradition, not a balancing of state interests versus individual civil liberties. Mag uh, predicted uh, a ruling on the preliminary injunction which he said asked the court to prohibit enforcement of the statute pending final resolution of this case. Could come sometime in mid to late March or April. So what? Uh, when does the state have to have this stuff through? Well, the state has until February 28th to res respond in that case. In the case brought by the Illinois State Rifle Association, the state has until March 1st to respond and March 2nd to respond in the case brought by the National Shooting Sports Foundation. So the judge has all of them. So he's requiring the state to show pictures and explain exactly what is in the firearms ban um, or the, the uh, yeah, the firearm and magazine ban. So we'll see. We'll see if the state can put all that together. Uh, February 28th is pretty much right around the corner. We're like just over a week or so. All right. So now turning our attention to the state of Oregon. All right. Um, Oregon, like many other states, if you if you look up um, uh, 2A sanctuary counties in, in America, you'd be amazed to see how many counties have considered themselves to be 2A 
um, sanctuary uh, counties uh, where that they will not follow state um, unconstitutional, that they feel are laws or firearms that are unconstitutional. Well, the Court of Appeals set a national precedent Wednesday as it voided a controversial gun rights ordinance that claimed state and federal firearm regulations didn't apply in Columbia County. Uh, this was voted on by the people of the county and um, it's like a 500 or 50,000 people county and uh, they voted by 500 votes to go as a 2A sanctuary county. Um, but this is the first such ruling passed at the appellate level. And while the decision has sway only within the state limits, the rulings could have major ramifications for more than the 1,900 counties nationwide that have declared themselves gun sanctuaries. And for those of you in the state of Illinois, and a lot of it out on the West Coast and stuff, uh, there are a lot of sanctuary counties. Illinois, it seems like every week there's another county that's becoming a, a sanctuary uh, county. Um, and it's coming, becoming more and more pra uh, common. And what they're worried about is that this case will cause a backlash against those. Uh, three appellate judges made the ruling in Columbia County case, including the presiding judge, uh, Douglas Tukey who cited a state law vesting the authority to regulate the sale and use of guns in Oregon solely with the legislature. If allowed to stand, the ordinance would effectively create a patchwork quilt of firearm laws in Oregon, Tukey wrote. It would have the potential to lead to uncertainty for firearm owners concerning the legality of their conduct as they traveled from county to county. Now, I get it, you know, um, uh, I get where he's coming from, um, but it's not quite a good enough reason to not allow that county to uh, exercise its Second Amendment rights. Uh, Columbia County voters first passed the Citizen Initiative in 2018. Um, the case uh, was closely watched on appeal with both the gun control group, Every Town for Gun Safety, and Rosenblum joining the case and seeking to overturn the case. Um, also, uh, Gun Owners of America got into the case, uh, although they did not make, uh, they gave some advice, but they did not really get into uh, um, specifics about the case. Uh, when it was when it was overturned, uh, every town praised the ruling, saying it struck a blow against the so-called constitutional sheriffs movement. Um, I haven't heard that before, but OK. Um, the interesting thing in this is one of the appeals judges, James Egan, noted attorneys for the gun rights group, and that is GOA, Gun Rights of uh, Gun Owners of America, that joined the suit has suggested the Columbia County Ordinance was necessary to prevent the United Nations from promulgating international gun law, which they vehemently say they did not say. And uh, they said it was a lie and it had nothing to do with the case. Egan dismissed the claim as an entirely fictitious problem and said it was a white supremacy dog whistle intended to invoke conspiracy theories of global cabals. Individual members of the court must call out illegitimate quasi-legal arguments and theories for what they are, anti-Semitic and racist tropes, he wrote. I'm no legal expert, but it seems like he's kind of rambling on and uh, saying stuff that he shouldn't in a court case where he should just stick to the facts and... Um, make his own arguments, not go off on tangents and stuff like that. So, but that leads us to Illinois FOIA information. Now, I know you've all been waiting for this. You're probably saying, Rich, you waited to the end, for God's sake. Okay, here's the end. Springfield, Illinois, new legislation in, introduced in Illinois would repeal the state's firearm owner identification card system. Okay, so the system has been in place since 1968. That's when I got my first card way back when. Um, but 
the thing is, is that a few years back, the case was brought all the way up to the Illinois Supreme Court, where the Illinois Supreme Court said that, yes, the Ford cart is unconstitutional, but we just don't want to kill the Ford because it would cause too much confusion. So they turned it back to the state and the legislatures and saying, you guys figure something else out and then put it through the right channels and we'll see where it goes. If it comes back here, if it's, you know, we'll, we'll see what happens. So up until yesterday, I thought, no, nah, that's never going to happen. You know, they're just going to sit on their hands. Well, lo and behold, uh, Senator Andrew Chesney from uh, Republican from Freeport and Representative John Cabello from Manchesney Park filed similar legislation in both the Illinois Senate and Illinois House. Federal background checks and waiting periods are adequate in weeding out those who should not be able to own a gun, making Illinois FOID system redundant. They both said that that was their claim when they introduced their legislation. And Illinoisans have a constitutional right to possess firearms, yet the legislature continually throws up roadblocks that interfere with that right, said Chesney. The legislatures who bring forward and pass these kinds of bills claim they are protecting public safety, but they are ignoring the very real fact that those who purchase firearms lawfully are not the ones responsible for the violent crime epidemic in the state. Hear, hear. The criminals ravaging the streets of Chicago are not lawful people. Illinois Ford card system is not preventing these criminals from getting their hands on guns. Good point. Representative Cabello stated, as a state representative and law enforcement officer, I understand the importance of upholding our constitutional rights to gun ownerships while also ensuring that the public safety is protected. Unfortunately, Illinois' current FOID card system does not provide adequate protection and fails to keep guns out of the hands of violent offenders and criminals. The current FOID card system fails to stop violent criminals from committing gun crimes while making purchasing a firearm a cumbersome process for those that follow the law. As state rep, I want to make sure that law-abiding citizens are able to exercise their right to bear arms without unnecessary burdens. Therefore, I am a proud to sponsor this proposal that voids the Illinois Ford card system. Hear, hear. So, there you go. People in the state of Illinois, you might be, <laughs> you might be lucky enough um, that uh, this might get some headway. Uh, we'll see. Uh, you live in a very democratic state run by a very anti-2A governor uh, who wants nothing better to ride on the coattails of taking firearms away from citizens all the way to the White House. Um, but we'll see. Uh, at least it's a step in the right direction. We'll see what's happened. Does it have uh, momentum? Does it have any teeth in it? Will the people go along with it? Will the citizens get behind it and uh, force their legislatures to vote for it? We'll see. So that's the news for this week on firearm legislation. Uh, I hope you have a good next week. I hope everything goes well. Uh, happy President's Day tomorrow uh, to the two presidents that, uh, that mean the most to me and many other people, Washington and Lincoln. And no, it's President's Day is for those two, not the other presidents. Although you probably could throw Lincoln and Millard Fillmore in there for me. But that's it. I uh, hope you all like I said, have a good time. Thank you, subscribers. Appreciate it. Thanks for passing this along to other people. And um, keep on carrying on, people, and always be aware of your surroundings. Make sure you've got food, water, medicine, and other supplies in case you got to bug out or shelter in place for the next year. And please, prep like your life depends on it because it really, really is important. Thanks a lot. Take care. Be safe. Always carry.